Welcome to United Network News, the official news channel for CARE, the Center for Amity and Restoration of Earth. I'm Sunny Galt. At UNN, you get the real news. Through our field messengers, we show you the truth about what's really taking place in our communities. We also bring you stories to help you remember who you are and why you're here, as well as regional stories that impact the people. And our World Situation Report reveals what's happening throughout the multiverse. We are here to restore Earth. In the U.S., it is Monday, March 11th, 2024. What does it mean to have financial freedom? Everybody's answer is a little bit different. Today you'll hear how some tribal members in Louisiana feel about the potential of living life without having to worry about money. And in Oklahoma, we're visiting Joe's Addiction Cafe, a supportive environment where the community can learn to overcome their obstacles and celebrate life. In the New Earth, we're getting some tips on how to find other like-minded, conscious people, communities that offer mutual support and understanding so you don't have to go on this journey alone. Plus, the power of connecting preschool-aged children with the elderly. The smiles are endless, and the wisdom each receives is priceless. This is Kaylin Gill, messenger for United Network News. Here's a look at today's field messenger reports from all around the world. Achieving financial freedom is an important goal for many people. It means living life on your own terms, unrestricted by financial constraints. UNN Field Messenger Mike Lopez interviews fellow tribal members about their views on financial freedom. Hello, Mike Lopez from Marksville, Louisiana, reporting for United Network News. Today, I'm out in my local forum where candidates and fellow tribal members have gathered, and I will be asking them what financial freedom means to them. Question. So, Julie, you're here with me. We're on United Network News. I got spread for it's oh, Excellent. And I'm going to ask you the one question we're asking everybody. What does financial freedom mean to you? So, financial freedom to me means where I can get up in the morning, grease my coffee, go throughout my day, and not have that stress of where I'm going to pay my line bill, how I'm going to pay my rent, or if I want to stop at Walmart and pick up some things, and I don't have to worry do I have it up in my bank. So we'll see, we'll find those extra gifts throughout the year for family and friends, but for myself, no, I don't, you don't have enough money in the bank. So for me, financial freedom is being at a point in your life where you're able to take care of your bills and also take care of your family. Hi, Ms. Bola. Hi. Bola, tell me what financial freedom means to you. Um, I think financial freedom means to me is not being able to be worried about, you know, where, how are you going to pay your bills, where everything's coming from, basically just being able to just Live your life, spend time with your family, enjoy your work, and don't feel like you're having to be there or that it's a burden to you. But to be able just to basically, like I said, freedom, being able to just enjoy it. And I'm here today with Tess Lopez. We're, we're gonna, I'm gonna ask her the question. Hello, Tess. Hi. So, what is, what does financial freedom mean to you? To me, it means I would. Feel um, just to be free from everything, from the deal, from from all of it, from the work. Um, I would love to live off grid. It's no boundaries, just on uh, you know, just doing your own thing and living off the earth. And I would love to just um, with no electricity, just drink your own water with rainwater, just things like that, and have biodegradable things. I mean, your home, everything. Like that's how I would love to live. So I would think that part of the freedom of not having to worry of the day-to-day, -day, of the work, of the fields, that, that's what it means to me. Well, thank you. I appreciate that answer. Thank you very much. Bye. Joey's Addiction Cafe in Oklahoma City creates a supportive environment for people dealing with life's difficulties. It's a space for sharing struggles and joys, highlighting the power of unity. UNN Field Messengers Manette and Anne introduce us to this amazing space. Hi, I'm Ann. I'm Minette. And, and we're field messengers for UNN in, in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, USA. USA. 
and it's it's going to be going to be it's It's up to me this is jamie zumalt she runs joe's addiction cafe here in oklahoma city and i'm going to let her tell you about her ministry here all right so how this came about we've been doing this for 17 years now and the very beginning we just opened up a tiny little coffee shop in a neighborhood here in oklahoma city that has a, a lot of need So every Sunday we do a a gathering in here where we talk about those two things. How do we love each other? How do we practice nonviolence? So we eat together. That's a really high value that I have. That feels to me like the kingdom of God, you know, we're hanging out, we're in community, we're eating together and celebrating life together. And then we have now have a shower where people can, can take a shower. We need lots more showers, but one is better than what we had before. Absolutely. Uh, we do laundry. We have three washers and three dryers. And <laughs> help tell people how you serve. It feels like a restaurant, and they're restaurant-quality meals. Yes. Uh, we get a lot of food that is donated to us, but then we also purchase food to, to fill out the meals. And we serve them on, on real plates and real silverware. During uh, our, our lunch time, we have a ritual that we do at the beginning of lunch where we talk about what we're grateful for. Yeah, so we have free coffee that's available to anyone who can't pay for it, but we also are a full service coffee shop. You know, people who are, are struggling financially, they might pay a dollar for a drink, but then we have people who come in for coffees and they buy a latte for $40, you know, uh, to help cover the cost of what we're doing here. So that's, that's part of how we bring in the income to support them. There really is a uh, the desire is for hospitality, yes. you know, that there would be a place where people feel welcomed, you know, to come in and, and hang out. And then we try to treat each other that way, right. not just the new guests. That come. We want you to become a UNN field messenger. These are everyday people just like you who want to make a difference in their community. You don't need any special training or equipment. Just use the camera on your mobile phone and show us what's happening in your area. You send us your videos and our production team will create the report for you. Our new website is now up and running, unitednetwork.earth. You can submit your Field Messenger reports directly through the Field Messenger tab at the top of the page. You can also email your reports to our new email address at fieldmessenger at unitednetwork.earth. Hey, I'm Kirsten from Switzerland. This is Wayne from Tucson. Hi, my name is Desmond from Ghana. I am Claudio from Dawsonville, Georgia. I'm Mikey from Pretoria, South Africa. Hi, I'm Steve McGrath, Fort McMurray, Alberta, Canada. People from all around the world are coming together. Happy day, beautiful world. We are here in a rather small urban garden, and this video is just to show you the joys that we've had in this garden with electric gardening. When news happens in their area, they show us what's really going on. We have people in the streets, protesting for and against. At United Network News, our field messengers are changing the face of news. This is Field Messenger Helen reporting with Nature and I'm going to talk to you about the bees again. Take the next step in restoring our planet. Become a UNN Field Messenger today. Hi, I'm Stephanie from South Africa. If it's going to be, it's up to me. If it's going to be, it's up to me. 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 It's up to all of us. We're UNN, and we're taking back the news. It's quite a journey to recognize the 3D matrix and make a conscious decision to leave it behind. And at times, you may feel a bit lonely, like no one else gets it or understands you. Finding like minds is a great way to build up your mental and emotional strength so you can continue to fulfill your purpose. Seth Dietlin communicates with angels. He's also a hypnotherapist. And today he's sharing what the angels have to say about the importance of making connections with like-minded people. So Seth, we're all on a journey and this can be some rugged terrain. <laughs> that we're on. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and finding other people, other conscious people to travel with, right? Our fellow companions on this journey. It's really important. I mean, people that are watching this now, you know, a lot of people may be watching this through our newscast and, you know, there are similar people there. But how do we find other people like us? It seems like we're such a small percentage of people now. It can be frustrating. 
Well, this is a common pain point, actually, is feeling a bit isolated when it comes to discovering a more expansive aspect of yourself. And then the people around you, people that you care about, who you're in relationship with, aren't really there yet. I mean, they'll get there, but they're not really there yet. And really the thirst that we have to be in this community, to be part of a family of those that have an expansive perspective is because it creates major synergy. And our appetite for expansive dialogue, our expansive connectivity or our appetite for expansive connectivity grows as a result of our own personal expansion. And there are a lot of new ways that are making themselves available to us. One of the ways to keep in mind is that the universe, the source of life, has an interesting way of making sure that we all find each other yeah. and surrender to the magic of life. And for those that live in remote areas, and uh, there's almost really no remote areas anymore, <laughs> but I hear from people in very, very... Uh, um, for like farm areas, places like Montana yeah. and Wisconsin, all over. And I hear from people in India and other countries. So this awakening is a global phenomenon and it's in the increase. And one of the things that happens as we increase in connectivity with each other is that by being in that synergy, we find that we discover aspects that other people have discovered or we share our discoveries so finding online conscious communities is a great way to start. And there are several of them. I offer one and several people will offer them in a way that we can connect. There's a lot of great teachers who, you know, maybe by participating in their courses or classes, you get to be part of their community and then you start meeting people. So there are so many ways that we can do it online. And one of the things that I find that's very interesting is that like when I create a community of people and it's online and people come in from all over the world, it turns out that there will be people in there that are nearby geographically that get to meet each other, which is very exciting because it's miraculous in that sense. So when we surrender to life and actually we can just uh, create a way of being grateful in advance. Thank you, thank you, thank you to the source of life for bringing in like-minded community. And of course, the source of life will always use miracles, dazzling miracles to bring us into that connectivity. In fact, you and I are connected through a series of dazzling miracles, That's true. which, is, which yeah. is a reminder. And so even bringing this content to whoever is listening comes through that chain reaction of dazzling miracles. Mm -hmm. So that's the number one way of allowing that to come through. So the more we're in that energy and the more we're open to that, the more we make ourselves available to that. One of the things that I find though too in discussions in my community is that people will be like, oh, you're my little secret because I don't tell people that I'm participating in. And that can make it a little tough to find community, but don't be afraid to go find it anyway, or to think about what other people are going to think about you being connected to expanded uh, thoughts or to people who embrace expanded thoughts. I love that you said, be open to what comes your way, because I feel like that's part of it too. When your mindset changes, when you're more expanded and more open. It's a frequency change. And we're like, like attracts like. And so I think on a subconscious level, we're out there and we will naturally be drawn to situations or people because our frequencies match. Right. And we well, this is the, yeah, yeah this is the mind, happens. this is the mind blowing part of it. Yeah. When our frequency shifts, we upgrade to new timelines, which means whoever we're going to encounter is also going to be a higher frequency. Right. Last week, I checked in for a flight at New York LaGuardia Airport. And for whatever reason, there were two gate agents 
there while I was checking in my luggage. And I don't know how this happened, but our conversation almost instantly combusted into an expansive conversation. And I didn't do anything effortful yeah. to make that happen. Yep. And that's where you're really going to start noticing that happen. It's going to show up in the strangest of places. Now, in this case, will I be having future content contact with those people? No, but there are still others that come in, such as yourself mm -hmm. and other people that I can count on continual connection and conversations with. Preschool age children are being introduced into elderly care facilities and nursing homes in a move to enrich the lives of both groups. The interactions have created amazing benefits for everyone through various planned activities from reading to painting, singing and storytelling, children are blooming with new skills. They are learning how to share and play while developing patience, listening and problem solving skills. For the elderly, these encounters have been deeply rewarding and joyous, reigniting a sense of purpose in their lives. Their days are now filled with smiles that only a child can bring. As they share stories and play, they pass on their knowledge and wisdom and rediscover the world through the eyes of their young friends. To further encourage this intergenerational bonding, many care homes, including preschools, are now including joint activities in their regular schedules. This promotes a sense of belonging for the elderly and teaches young children valuable lessons about respect, empathy, and compassion toward the elderly. We can all learn from each other and find joy in unexpected places. These connections we build as a society where all ages are valued and celebrated. New research shows fitness trackers could be a game changer in monitoring pregnancies and potentially predicting the risk of premature births. Fitness trackers are already popular for monitoring physical activity and sleep patterns, but this study highlights their potential for maternal health as well. A team of doctors and researchers in Boston, Massachusetts, analyzed data from over 240 pregnant women wearing fitness trackers. On average, all women gave birth seven weeks after their heart rate changed. Mothers who hearts, whose heart rates changed before their 33rd week of gestation meant they were most likely to give birth prematurely. This groundbreaking research shows the potential for technology to improve maternal health and potentially reduce the number of babies being born too soon. High-risk pregnancies could also be detected and possibly prevented when pregnant women wear a fitness tracker. Tai Chi, a mind-body exercise infused with the deep wisdom of Asian traditions, stands out for its unique approach to promoting health and well-being. Rooted in the methods of Qigong and inspired by the principles of martial arts and controlled breathing, this gentle exercise form offers comprehensive benefits. Tai Chi caters to individuals across all age groups, particularly seniors seeking an easy way to get their bodies moving. Unlike strenuous workouts, Tai Chi is centered around slow movements and deep breathing that enriches both the body and soul. For those with physical limitations, Tai Chi emerges as an empowering practice. Participants often describe their Tai Chi experience as uplifting and transformative, highlighting its role in enhancing their physical strength, flexibility, and balance. Embracing Tai Chi could very well be the gateway to a more vibrant, balanced, and healthy life. We are United Network News. Every day, we release real stories from real people all over the world. Hill Messenger reporting from Gold Coast, Australia. Denmark. Canada. Uganda. From Atlanta. In Southern California. In their own words, people like you share what's really happening in their area. At UNN, you are the news. You are creating a new world with infinite possibilities. You are the restoration plan. Come join us for the real news every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday 
only on United Network. We're UNN, and we're taking back the news. Now, a look at regional stories around the world. It's an unusual sight in Afghanistan. Women are coming together to protest the Taliban's restrictions on their freedom. Learn more about their secret gatherings. Deadly rains rip through areas of Indonesia, causing flash floods and landslides. And now tens of thousands of people are seeking refuge. A dangerous situation for pregnant women in Haiti. Many could lose their access to health care due to the escalation of gang violence. And a cancer-causing chemical has been found in popular acne treatments sold at stores like Target and Walmart. In Afghanistan, small groups of women are challenging the Taliban's oppressive restrictions on their freedoms. Despite the risk of detention by the Taliban, who have cracked down on protests, women convened in secret gatherings across various provinces to mark International Women's Day. They held signs demanding rights, justice, freedom, and called for global attention to their situation. The Taliban's return to power in August of 2021 has led to severe constraints on women and girls, including bans on education, employment outside the home, and the enforcement of strict dress codes. This situation has left more than 12 million Afghan women in need of humanitarian assistance, further isolating them and risking deeper poverty across the country. Representatives from several Chinese provinces and cities are meeting with top state bankers in Beijing. The aim is to renegotiate repayment terms for substantial debts accumulated from more than a decade of expansive, expansive infrastructure projects. The massive liabilities, often not appearing in official balance sheets, are threatening economic growth and limiting new investments amid efforts to recover post-pandemic. These debts totaling up to $13 trillion, according to Goldman Sachs, pose imminent risks of default without intervention. Beijing has responded by allocating more than $200 billion in special refinancing bonds to assist in repaying matured bonds. Local communities face uncertainty as projects stall and the future of local investments becomes unclear, impacting jobs and local development. In Turkey, the agricultural sector is facing a severe crisis impacting both farmers and consumers. Rising costs for essentials like agricultural diesel, which surged by 76% last year, and increased fertilizer prices have pushed farmers deeper into debt. The Turkish currency's dramatic depreciation, coupled with inflation rates estimated at 127%, aggravates the situation. Despite a 44.5% budget increase for farmer support, it falls short compared to its European counterparts, with German farmers receiving considerably more in subsidies. Farmers' debts to banks spiked by 80% last year, a stark increase from 19 years ago. This financial strain threatens their livelihoods, forcing them into loans, and poses a risk to food security potentially leading to unaffordable prices for consumers. Torrential rains in Sumatra, Indonesia, have led to devastating flash floods and landslides, claiming at least 21 lives with six individuals still missing. The capital city and surrounding districts are amongst the hardest hit, with more than 80,000 people seeking refuge in government shelters, as more than 20,000 homes were submerged. Efforts to provide the evacuees with essential supplies like food, water, and medicine are ongoing, primarily through local mosques serving as temporary shelters. Rescue and relief efforts continue to face obstacles, including infrastructure damage, power outages, and excess access restrictions due to mud and debris. 
With the forecast predicting more rainfall, concerns over additional landslides and flooding persist, worsening the circumstances of those affected. Dubai and the United Arab Emirates experienced unusual severe weather on Saturday as intense rainfall led to localized flooding affecting daily life and transportation. The downpour, tallying nearly 50 millimeters or two inches within six hours, disrupted flights at Dubai International Airport, impacting carriers like Emirates and Fly Dubai. The heavy rain, uncommon in this typically arid region, also caused traffic disruptions, with Dubai police closing parts of a major highway and vehicles navigating through flooded streets. Emergency teams were deployed to manage the aftermath, including clearing fallen tree limbs and opening drainage grates. Emergency services had prepared for the storm, having alerted the public in advance. A school in Southern India has introduced IRIS, the country's first AI-powered humanoid ro robot teacher, it's hard to say. <laughs> Developed by a local robotics firm, IRIS enables users to connect through an Android app, making education more accessible and engaging. The robot, showcased in a traditional sari, offers hands-on learning experiences, demonstrating the potential of AI to transcend traditional learning boundaries. The Indian government champions the integration of AI across various sectors, announcing a substantial investment through the India AI mission. This initiative aims to promote homegrown AI technologies while ensuring responsible utilization. Measures are being taken to regulate AI applications to safeguard against disinformation and maintain public trust. Armed attackers have kidnapped 15 children from an Islamic school in northwestern Nigeria, marking the third mass abduction in the region within a week. The victims, between 8 and 14 years old, were taken from their dormitories, adding to more than 480 individuals abducted in recent days, many of whom are children. The incidents are part of a disturbing trend affecting the region where criminal gangs known as bandits terrorize villages, demanding large ransoms. Families describe a, a life of fear and uncertainty, hardly eating or sleeping as they seek safety away from their homes at night. The Nigerian government has mobilized security forces, but challenges remain due to the country's vast and remote landscapes and a stretched military. In Malawi, students with dreadlocks are now permitted to attend public schools. Mandated by the High Court in Malawi, this decision addresses longstanding educational discrimination against Rastafarians, who uphold the growing of dreadlocks as part of their faith. Previously, children from the Rastafarian community faced denial of admission to public schools, a practice that prompted legal action on behalf of affected students. The Ministry of Education has been instructed to publicize these changes by June 30th, ensuring no child is denied education on grounds of their religious beliefs or practices. This ruling reflects a growing recognition of religious and cultural rights in education, aligning with a similar 2020 verdict in Kenya. The escalating gang violence in Haiti's capital has put nearly 3,000 pregnant women at risk of losing access to essential healthcare services. The Haitian government declared a state of emergency as gangs wreak havoc throughout the city. Complications without medical intervention and more than 500 survivors of sexual violence may be left without necessary care. Sexual assault is increasingly used by gangs as a tool for intimidation and control, with many victims too frightened to come forward. Haiti's health facilities are also struggling with shortages of staff, beds, and blood, further compounding this crisis. The situation is worsened by a lack of international support and the country's strict abortion laws. 
Mexico has halted the import of genetically modified or GM corn from the U.S., demanding proof that it poses no risk to human health. This decision stems from concerns over the potential health risks associated with consuming GM corn, a staple in the Mexican diet, and the herbicide glyphosate. Despite assertions from U.S. authorities on the safety of biotech products, Mexico remains steadfast, citing studies linking GM corn consumption to glyphosate exposure to serious health issues. The dispute threatens U.S. corn sales, significantly impacting farmers amidst dropping demand and prices. The U.S. challenges Mexico's ban as unscientific and a breach of trade commitments. Mexico emphasizes its right to ensure the health safety of its population without impacting trade volumes. In the United States, legislation is underway to extend and expand compensation for those living near sites contaminated by nuclear activities. This bill seeks to extend the Radiation Exposure Compensation Act for five additional years, widening its scope to include affected individuals in Missouri, Idaho, Montana, Colorado, Tennessee, Kentucky, Alaska, and Guam. The legislation has sparked debate over its financial implications, with some advocating for budget offsets to cover the costs. Despite these concerns, advocates have been tirelessly working to bring justice to those who have suffered health issues due to radiation exposure. The prevalence of cancer and other health issues in these communities highlights the urgent need for increased compensation and health care coverage. The Army Corps of Engineers has also initiated testing in certain areas following reports of high radiation levels, emphasizing concerns over environmental contamination and public health. An independent U.S. laboratory has found dangerous levels of benzene, a cancer-causing chemical in popular acne treatments. The affected brands include Clinique, Clearasil, and products sold at Target and Walmart. The lab has petitioned the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, to recall the affected products and revisit industry guidelines. The implicated brands have issued statements regarding the safety of their products, emphasizing proper usage as directed. However, the potential exposure to benzene, particularly at levels far exceeding the FDA's conditional limits, raises significant concerns about the long-term health effects on consumers. The FDA has yet to respond to the petition for a recall. New York City has announced the deployment of 750 National Guard soldiers and an additional 250 officers to strengthen security on the city's subway. This move comes as a response to recent violent incidents aiming to reassure commuters. Even though crime rates have declined, high profile attacks have left both commuters and transit workers feeling unsafe. The deployment, coupled with the return of bag checks, is seen by some as increasing the perception of danger rather than ensuring safety. Meanwhile, the state plans to boost safety measures further, including installing new security cameras in conductor cabins and seeking legislative approval to ban criminals from the transit system. A migrant detention center in Rome, Italy, faces severe criticism after a 19-year-old Guinean detainee allegedly committed suicide last month. Italy's migrant repatriation centers, criticized for human rights abuses, detain undocumented migrants and failed asylum seekers in conditions worse than prisons without charge for months. The centers, lacking proper facilities, often do not repatriate detainees due to bureaucratic issues and lack of agreements with countries of origin. Officials defend these centers as essential for managing migration, recently extending detention times to 18 months. An online petition demands the closure of Rome's center, citing violence, suicides, and protests. Six more migrants attempted suicide recently, with one hospitalized and three transferred 
due to incompatible conditions. A secondary school in South Yorkshire, England has sparked controversy with its approach to curbing student absences by physically checking on the absent students' homes. School staff are reportedly monitoring families by checking in to see if cars are in the driveway or if steam is being released from the heaters to determine if a child was truly absent with a valid reason. This method has faced criticism from the National Education Union, describing it as an invasive measure that damages the relationship between schools and families. Despite the backlash, the school insists these checks are part of a broader effort to ensure student safety and address the persistent issue of unauthorized absences. This approach has divided opinion amidst growing concerns over student attendance rates, highlighted as a significant problem in recent inspections. The school has attempted to improve attendance by introducing voucher rewards for consistent presence and moving away from punitive measures like fines. Recent research highlights the unchecked spread of PCBs or polychlorinated biphenyls chemicals, which are banned in the US and have been since 1979 due to their toxicity. Despite regulations, unintentional production and release of PCBs persist, posing significant health risks, not only to marine life, but potentially impacting human health as well. These chemicals, known for their persistence in the environment, are linked to severe ecological impacts, including the drastic th decline of killer whale populations due to PCB accumulation. Concerns are growing as it's estimated that current PCB production might exceed historical peaks, emphasizing the need for stricter controls and monitoring to prevent further environmental and health consequences. Authorities are actively seeking to impose tighter limitations on the use of PCBs through current dis discussions. Bank West has announced the closure of all of its 60 branches in Western Australia by year's end, affecting both urban and regional areas. This decision comes as the bank transitions to digital services, citing a decline in face-to-face -face banking. However, the move has sparked concern amongst those who rely on in-person services, particularly the elderly, indigenous communities, and non-English speakers. The finance sector union criticized the bank for not prioritizing these vulnerable groups, and customers expressed their dissatisfaction, highlighting the necessity of physical banking services for many. Bank West has promised job opportunities for the 350 staff members affected and custom solutions for the 2,000 customers who exclusively use in-person banking. A recent study highlights the severe working conditions and mental health issues facing chefs in Australia and New Zealand. The survey shows nearly half of the chefs are in precarious employment despite a skills shortage. A significant portion works well beyond the legal 38-hour work week, with some clocking in more than 62 hours, often without entitled breaks or compensation for overtime. Financial struggles are prominent, with chefs facing economic insecurity, meal skipping due to financial pressures, and being compelled to work even when sick. The industry's culture contributes to a high incidence of mental distress amongst chefs, with one in 10 suffering significantly. The sector's toxic work culture is linked to high levels of fatigue, substance abuse, and a worrying trend toward depression. The study emphasizes the urgent need for improved working conditions and management support in the hospitality sector. Also in Australia, financial stresses cause significant social isolation and loneliness, affecting citizens' mental and physical health. Recent research shows financial stress is pushing individuals into isolation, severing connections with family and friends as the costs of basic activities become prohibitive. The increase in petrol prices has led to reduced mobility, with some unable to afford even necessary travel 
leading to significant reductions in social visits. The impact is profound on mental health as social isolation escalates into loneliness compared, uh, compared by experts to the health risks of smoking. Also, loneliness rates have doubled amongst those cutting back on social interactions with children facing exclusion from extracurricular activities. Young adults report a sharp rise in financial stress impacting their mental health, sleep, motivation, and mood. Countermeasures such as being vocal about your money goals and boundaries and seeking cost-free social activities are being encouraged. Tired of being programmed? At United Network, you'll discover the truth about what's really happening on our planet. Get instant access to our written news, UNN newscasts, world situation reports, and in-depth stories from our field messengers. Manifest your amazing abilities as we explore the new earth, plus original series to inspire and encourage you throughout your day. Get connected through United Chat, our personal chat room where you can join the conversation, share your experience, and also submit your questions for Kim. Watch United Network at home or on the go through your computer, favorite online streaming program, or mobile apps. Welcome to United Network News. Start your free trial today. UnitedNetwork.Earth, bringing people together. And now the World Situation Report with Kimberly Gogan from the Office of the Guardian. The remnants of the alternative timeline universes are falling away, and New Earth reveals itself. The deep state was hoping for a big win over the weekend due to the new moon and the equinox approaching. And we will discuss the impact of wisdom on humanity. Now here's Kimberly Gogan with the Office of the Guardian. Hi, Kim. Hi, Sunny. Hi, welcome. <laughs> happy Monday. <laughs> happy Monday and happy, what is it, uh, second day of the new moon. Oh, is it? I no. hadn't noticed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, you haven't noticed, but, you know, the deep state is forever hopeful. Yes. Of they course. Are. Yes. And I guess to some degree, I, I can understand what they were looking for. Mm. Um, but again, uh, knowledge doesn't overcome wisdom. Right. Uh, in this particular case. And they're still running on old knowledge uh, and the fact that, you know, if something changes, you know, it's like reading the bus schedule from 1975 or something, you know, yeah. the bus hasn't come on that route in forever, but they still have the old schedule and they're ever hopeful the bus is going to arrive, I guess, in their favor. Uh, so it was a little crazy over the weekend, not going to lie. Uh, yesterday was pretty rough. I mean, even energetic wise, it was a little bit rough very heavy on Saturday and Sunday. And, you know, this was due to them trying to gain some access, I think, to an alternative timeline. Um, I'm not really entirely sure. I listened to their meetings. I listened to what they discussed. Uh, there were some old retired uh, group that came in uh, on Saturday to advise them from a group called S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, very similar to the Marvel Comics folks, but not quite. There's actually a group called S.H.I.E.L.D. And yeah. they were old generals, and they asked for Langley Five, uh, the Global Headquarters, and a few other groups, Silent Circle, uh, were all asking for their advice on what they should do to prepare for allegedly something that was going to happen on the new moon, mm -hmm. according to their books, apparently. And they gave them old access codes that they used to have when they were working. Uh, of course, none of them worked. They tried them. Uh, it's not just about gaining access to computers, but it's also uh, control of things like uh, weather manipulation and energy and essence and, you know, knowledge and wisdom and, and a lot of different things they were looking for. They were forever hopeful. Now, to be fair, as it's not exactly a timing thing, so it wasn't exactly a day, a uh, predetermined day that this would actually take place. It was just a matter of 
I guess you would say event one event after the next event after the next event occurring and then therefore the next thing that would occur would be the removal of any holographic timeline overlays. So this was taking place this weekend, uh, still is taking place today as, as all the remnants of the holographic timelines uh, fade away. So it's kind of like if the universe, if you look at the universe like a house of mirrors at a, at a fair, you know, you see yourself standing in the middle and then you see multiple reflections of yourself throughout the mirrors. Yeah. Um, and of course, there's only one you and there's only one multiverse. Right. But you're seeing a hologram, essentially, uh, which could have a long time ago or a while ago, uh, a few years ago, could have been affected. Uh, if you affected one of the holograms, as an example, it would have affected the reality. Mm. Uh, so it's not quite a mirror, per se. It's an actual functional um, division of oneself, for lack of a better term. So I, I would say that um, that could be what they were looking for. Uh, perhaps they thought that uh, they had not lost the war, uh, which we have already won. Uh, Source has already won. So, uh, and due to the fact that the light won, there, I guess they were hopeful that the dark could still win, and that they that we would merge all these multi, all these universes of timelines mm -hmm. into a dark timeline forever perhaps is what they were hoping for or waiting for, uh, but that didn't happen. Uh, so uh, that's leaving some people upset. Uh, they were pretty upset yesterday, uh, last night and this morning, that things appeared to be going in the other direction. Uh, I know everybody this morning is looking for their money, uh, Federal Reserve and Treasury. And, you know, of course, they're always promised money after a, a new moon. And and nothing happened there. Now, the other thing that uh, they have been trying to do is prepare for a financial crash. By prepare, I mean trying to find any access they can to the financial system in order to crash it. Uh, due to their unexpected wealth they were expecting today, I guess, um, <laughs> you know, they would then would they would have then crashed the markets and then reverted everything over to their mm, cursed currency and we mm -hmm. you know we would have been in a perpetual state of evil for all eternity uh, but all of these things um, of course didn't happen this weekend now as far as a financial catastrophe mm -hmm. and an expectation of that the answer to the question is no it's a rumor going around everywhere uh, I do not see a catastrophe for humans walking the earth. I see a catastrophe for banks uh, with no access to your funds. I see a catastrophe for governments uh, that is not avoidable at this point. Um, I see a catastrophe for the global headquarters in all of their five sectors. I see a catastrophe for the order of the black sun, the order of the dragon, and probably eventually all of their corporations that are under their umbrella uh, due to their refusal to see life any other way than some old knowledge that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's nothing we can do at this point. You know, it was a hope uh, that we would be able to keep governments for a while. Uh, how long are they going to limp along? I don't, I don't know. Uh, I know that there are a lot of people telling them, just wait, just wait, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Uh, eventually they'll run out of things that could potentially come. Uh, fake bonds on screens, fake accounts, you know, there's nothing, you know, the, I guess they want to live in a fantasy like any good narcissist does, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know what the next date is that they're going to give everybody after today. I assume. It, Kim, I was just going to say, you know, with these groups that are kind of holding out and not wanting change, I'm assuming there are still people within those groups, 
like the treasury and places like that that do want to move forward or their hands their hands are just tied because the people above them are making the call and they can't do anything about it well you know it's like the global headquarters you know that we've discussed yeah uh you know we were kind of hopeful to see what they would do because now the ball was in their court you know as far mm -hmm. as going down the food chain further and further and further and these are the people that guide or for as many of them that are still listening the operatives and in in all five sectors meaning the political yeah. sector financial sector intelligence and military and media okay. uh, after listening into the meetings that they had over the weekend and watching them make all the attempts that they made based on phone calls that I had where I gave a certain amount of information to see what they would do. And a lot of that information are, is stuff that I had put out uh, on the news in the past. Uh, and some of it I didn't, uh, just because it's not relevant uh, for, and it would get quite boring for me to rattle off location after location after location of different things we've cleaned up. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And just to see what they were going to do with this information. And like clockwork, you know, they went to all these locations trying to get their special badge and, you know, their level nine Omega badge, so to speak, that would give them black screen access is what they were looking for. And of course, nothing happened. Just like I said, nothing would happen, but nothing happened. And it appears they're still looking for more information. They tried to call me yesterday. I'm too busy. Um, I was way too busy yesterday and um, uh, let them know I'd be washing my hair today. So um, also busy. And there's just no, no reason to give them any further information. There's no reason to have those phone calls. And, and the person they're being, that is being forced to call me is under tremendous pressure to call me. And I know that. So I just prefer you know, to say, look, I've got nothing else to say. I've said I'm gonna, all I'm going to say uh, to those people. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that there is probably a 0.00000001% chance of them, <laughs> you know, turning around. Therefore, you're probably going to see a steep decline in the political sectors. You're going to see a steep decline in the in the banking, uh, back office of the banks, so to speak, mm -hmm. their income. Uh, they, I don't think they're ever going to become your service provider. Uh, so we're going to have to probably figure out a way to distribute money uh, electronically uh, and then eventually print our own. Maybe we'll make sunny bucks. I mean, if they've got Trump bucks, I can make sunny bucks. I don't want to um, have anything to do with anything Trump has ever done. <laughs> Just for the record. Yeah. You're going to have humanity yeah. bucks or something like that. <laughs> have vanity bucks? I know. <laughs> Green bucks. Oh, my goodness. I know. Whatever. So, well, you know, I, I don't know. It's like, you know, I, I know it's frustrating. Um, and, and I know that we wanted to move this along faster. But, you know, I also see the other side of it. And there is a lot of value, I feel, in in doing this from scratch. I mean, I don't know. Like, part of me, just like, you know, a lot of you guys watching, is like, can we trust them? I don't know. They've done a lot of bad stuff. You know, sometimes you just need to clear the slate. I kind of feel yeah. like that's what this is. You know, this is just us. We're just going to do it our own way. Sorry, guys. You know, if you see the light later on, give us a call. But no, we're not we're not taking you on as groups. If as an individual, if you want to make changes, then you know. But it's well, just... and their version of clear the slate obviously is a depopulation situation. Oh, Our version yeah. of clear clear the slate is also a depopulation situation <laughs> that would arise. It's just a different kind of depopulation. You know, we're not looking at the average everyday human as a threat. No we're looking at them as a threat to the average everyday human. Yeah. So uh, how many more layers do we have to go down and give people an opportunity to make a change and, and do something different? Mm -hmm. How many layers? Uh, I, I don't know. You know, I, do we have to give them a chance anymore? I mean, pretty much they've all, no, no one, no one has 
completely come forward with honor and integrity. Mm -hmm. You know, they've all dipped their, you know, foot in the water to see what they could steal from us. Right. You know, I've seen that'll happen a lot uh, and steal from others. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't, I don't really see any hope. I, I don't see, I don't see any funding for governments ever. Uh, I don't, I don't see any, um, any thoughts that we're going to repair uh, political sectors, military sectors at, at all at this point. Mm -hmm. um, intelligence sectors. So I'm just kind of taking it out of the equation. And just like we stopped reported on, reporting on governments, I'm pretty much kind of done talking about what the deep state is doing constantly. Uh, if you want us to keep informing you, that's fine. We can do that. I can give you a blow by blow of everything they do every day uh, <laughs> to try to uh, prevent humanity from moving forward. But, you know, it's it's very old, old programming, and it goes back more than um, as far as humans on Earth are concerned. You know, this goes back about a million and a half years. I mean, it's been some time, uh, in, mm -hmm. in as far as Earth years are concerned. Uh, some uh, some things did come to light in that realm as far as just how powerful humans are and why they're used a lot throughout the multiverse in different ways. Uh, so the human original DNA blueprint allowed the human being to possess the ultimate divine, so source. Mm -hmm. It also allowed you to, based on your vessel structure and, and, and your, you were able to contain that type of uh, ultra pure energy an mm -hmm. ultra pure essence. On the other side, you could have also chosen to contain the dark divine. Mm. So this is human beings. Now, for the most part, we have retained a connection and some more than others to to the divine on the human being as far as humans on earth are concerned mm -hmm. now the reason why that was permitted to some degree is because they need your energy right. they need your essence they need they need who you are to make them who they are and to create things out of darkness mm -hmm. now They've tried genetically modifying us over and over and over again so that we couldn't connect to the divine or had only a limited amount to ensure your survival of being a good, so you could be a good battery here on earth. Right. Uh, so if you imagine the genetic modification, not only of your human, but all of the planes of existence within your human, to prevent you from receiving the energy, the wisdom, and all of these types of things, then could you reach maybe the astral plane? You know, astral project, uh, those types of things creating the, well, maybe, you know, they were trying to make sure you just never got to nine, in other words, on either side, so okay. the, to the highest realm of the multiverse, source and anti source. But, when it came to the family side, those humans were genetically modified in a different way, had access to, let's just say, more technologies than we do, and they were allowed to be genetically modified if they were willing to accept a covenant with Lucifer or anti-source. Mm -hmm. Once that was done, they would then receive the ultimate dark divine, meaning anti-source. So is there any coming back from that? Well, um, I don't know. 
Mm. Are they still anchoring the darkness here? No. Have they lost their connection to the anti-source? Yes. Uh, is this making them go a little crazy? Yes, it is. Um, you know, and we're starting to see some very odd behaviors from these humans. Uh, we're starting to see a lot of people die. Uh, there are rumors going around right now that uh, Kate Middleton passed away. Remember when I said that before? I'm like, they're bringing her up a lot in these health conditions. Uh huh. You know, we you know we've talked about that a little bit, and then Chucky too. Yep, there are rumors going around uh, that. You know, they are not with us anymore. Uh, but mm -hmm. then again, you know, high profile political figures usually die in December. So we don't know how long the game is going to go on. Mm -hmm. I think they're still waiting to see what happens on the summer solstice or the birthday of uh, William. We'll see, uh, which is going to be nothing. Uh, this is why I tell you, you know, the reconnection back to source in many different ways, be it wisdom, energy, essence, consciousness, it's ever increasing now as we remove those filters that were put in place by the dark side. Mm -hmm. You don't really realize how powerful you are as a being throughout the multiverse. Now, with great power comes great responsibility, too. Uh, there are more of us than there are of them. And what one thing I have seen uh, going on over the weekend is most of us are excited about receiving the wisdom. You know, we're happy about that. We're, we're thankful for the connection to source. We're thankful for infinite wisdom to do things that you would have never thought in a million years that you could do. Mm -hmm. You know, you could literally sit down in a plane and figure out how to fly it. Mm -hmm. You know, that could be anything from a spacecraft to a fighter jet to a, you know, I mean, you name it. You could if you wanted to. Sure. If you just sat there and listened, the wisdom will tell you exactly what everything does and how to work it and how to fly it safely and, you know, where you need to be, what altitude, what speeds. You'll know it all. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've tested some of this stuff myself. It does work. Uh, but on the flip side, we have a lot of people in this world that have full cups. You know, they have, they wake up every day and their cup is full. And even though they're receiving the wisdom, they're receiving the intuition, their ego does not permit them to listen. Because they're going to even tell source, no, the world works this way. No, I am this person. And this is kind of why I had the narcissist discussion with you last week, because, you know, you're still going to see a lot of those people that even though everything in their intuitive self tells them that this is not correct, that this is correct, you know, don't go there. They still do it anyway because they, they're going to say, I am this person. Their ego is telling them that that's who they are. They're, they're living in a narcissist fantasy world. And even God isn't going to tell them that they're wrong. So you certainly aren't going to. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also people that are going a little crazy right now because they're having to see, you know, maybe they do have a little bit of a connection with the creator. So they're kind of aware of intuition and how it works. And they're starting to see things that are not acceptable to them. Because they've built up in their world that the reason why I am not successful, as an example, this is something a human would say to themselves, mm -hmm. is because the government won't let me be, because the IRS still exists, because there's chemtrails in the air, because there's all of these things. Therefore, that is the reason why I am not successful in my career, so as an example. This mm -hmm. is something someone, a human would say to themselves. Mm -hmm. And the divine is telling them, oh, no, 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 that has nothing to do with it. You know. You're, you're just lazy. Mm -hmm. You know, get up and do this, do that, do this. And now you're choosing to ignore those things because you prefer to live in narcissistic victimhood. So what's going to happen when you don't have anybody to blame anymore? 
not you personally or, or even anybody really watching this, but you know these people. Everybody knows one of these people in their life. They have accepted that they have received knowledge from the internet, a book, a priest, a rabbi, or whomever, and that is a fact. And there's no room in my cup for any additional information, including wisdom directly from source. Mm -hmm. You know, so we're going to see a lot of these people have a really hard time with themselves. Um, you know, is there something we can do to help those people? I don't know. I, can we help somebody empty their cup? Just a little bit? You know, I don't know. Are they, is there a way to educate people? And these are for people that are watching this that are in adult education. I mean, educating our kids, you know, as part of care, educating our kids is important. Yeah. Educating our adults right now is more important because who is going to educate our children? Mm -hmm. You know, the wisdom of people that have walked this earth for 70 years or 80 years or even even longer is invaluable mm -hmm. because people see these people, whether they want to or not, even as much as society has tried to condition it out of us, you're looking at these people as someone who knows something. So maybe this is a job for the older folks that said they don't know where their place is in New Earth. Well, it's also tough for those older groups too. <clears throat> sometimes, not always. And I'm sure for our audience, it's a different situation. But sometimes when you've gone through life and you've believed one thing for so long, you know, I know that's, that's when I talk to people, that's what I struggle with is someone believed something for so long and had practiced whatever X, Y, Z was for so long. Mm -hmm. Um, it's hard to change that mindset and to think that your whole life, something that you thought was true, isn't true. And all the decisions you're making now are being based on false information. That's a very hard realization, you know? Um, so sometimes it can be tougher for people that have been around longer. Yeah. I mean, that's true to some degree. And I think there are certain things for people, uh, even younger folks uh, that are difficult to grasp. You know, say, for example, if this was 10 years ago or 20 years ago, we didn't know about certain, or at least I can say I didn't know, um, just how bad certain types of health care could be for my child. Yeah, of course, yeah. You know, I, I distinctly remember, because I didn't know at the time, you know, when she was entering into first grade and she was sitting on my lap and there's 10 needles or whatever the heck that was, you know, all at the same time in the same arm in the same place. And I probably cried more than she did, but I didn't know what I was doing was harmful. I didn't know. Awesome. Yeah. So now, you know, we have information on how to fix that. Mm hmm. Uh, you know, and remove those types of things from, from the system. And that's what we've done. But, you know, I, I must have known more than my intuition must have been telling me more at that time because I was so upset. Mm -hmm. You know, so I was hard. so upset that day. Uh, and maybe, maybe there was a part of me that wanted to just get up and walk away. And I probably should have. I, I can tell you one experience that I had <clears throat> with uh, one of my daughters is we it was like a flu vaccine or something like that we were going to give her and she took off running. So I know she knew and, and this is my daughter that's very intuitive and connected spiritually. She went off running. I had to chase her down in a it wasn't really a hospital, but a bunch of doctors off, you know, multi level, huge place. She knew I know she knew. And yeah. she was so upset. And, but it, that's one of these things that, you know, this is just one example for parents that we're just going to have to forgive ourselves because you don't know what you don't know. Right. And, you it, know, yeah, it's hard. And you, 
Well, exactly. And you don't. But, you know, like you said, there are some things that we now look back at based on all we've learned that we've either done to ourselves, our Mm -hmm. family, our kids, certain foods. We, you know, had things, you know, in this world, we, you know, and, and as you learn, you're thinking, oh, my gosh, I gave my child X. You know, I would never want to hurt my child, you know, and it's, it's, you got to be careful not to enter into the guilt and shame section. Yes. Because that's what they want from you. And they will try to use your wisdom against you uh, for that reason to, to bring you down, to get Mm -hmm. you to live in perpetual guilt and shame for things you may or may have or may have not done anything about. So I... I can see that a lot of people are struggling with that right now. Mm-hmm. I've had a lot of conversations with people uh, in the last few days about people having a difficult time. You know, and then there's other aspects of this too, financial aspects of things. Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> as an example, you know, I, I've talked to people that have been involved with the currency reset and with, you know, what they believe is at the highest level uh, in, you know, the financial world. Uh, They have been uh, chasing pallets of cash, chasing money, chasing this, and they've been doing it for like 15, 20 years, like a long time. This scam has been going on since March of 2007. That's a long time. Yeah, it is. And they have chased the dangling carrot in the word, to use the words of Rothschild. They have been chasing the dangling carrot so long, they see it as their only way out of all their problems, the, all the money they borrowed, all the homes they've mortgaged, all the you know, cars they've leveraged, like just everything and anything chasing all around the world, a dream. Yeah. In an all along, the higher ups knew it was never going to happen. They were never going to have this money. They would have never given it to them. They never gave it to them when they had access to all the money in the world. Mm Mm-hmm. And and why would you think they're going to change their mind now and all of a sudden do you better than they did you before? You know, <laughs> they're not. That's never going to happen. Uh, they. And this is where the wisdom is going to be tough. Because they're going to get it, too. You know, providing they're not too, too dark, but they're still going to get the wisdom. Yeah. And they're just going to want to ignore it and keep going with their alleged books of knowledge. Mm -hmm. They'll never stop. They're going to refuse the wisdom of source. Even though everything, every fiber of their being tells them they're going in the wrong direction. You're on the freeway. There's six lanes all coming at you. And all the other cars are going toward you. And you're trying to head towards all the other cars. It's not going to end well. No, that's dangerous. (laughs) That's very dangerous. It's not going to end well for you. No. You know, and all the people you try to, you know, you're going, you're going the wrong way. You're going into a headwind here and you're not going to get anywhere. It's never going to change. You know, are they willing to empty their cup a little? Well, maybe. And this, this is what I was going to say is. The more they see other people, like some people are just creatures of habit and they really do want to move with a group. You know, I've never really been that way. Probably most of us watching this have never been that way. We've always been little outcasts. But there are a lot of people in society that will adopt something once more people, you know, once they feel like it's safe or whatever the mental process is they're going through. So I do think that that could have a positive effect in emptying their cup, so to speak. But there's just yeah. too few people right now that are talking about it. Um, for it, it, it's still very fringe. Any of these ideas that we've been talking about are still very fringe. Oh, absolutely. And and it's only been a decade or so before you're even having uh, alleged doctors on TV talk about things that are natural. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know. 
it's, uh, you know, you're starting to see commercials now about uh, supplements and other things for different things that ail you. I mean, you are starting to see some of that come out in mainstream news. Mm -hmm. um, is it going to change the world overnight? Is Are people going to listen? No, because there's a hundred more commercials about, you know, take this for your rash, you know, it may cause sudden death, liver failure, heart attack, you know, so on and so forth. And the list goes on, but you won't have a rash anymore. You know? <laughs> um, yeah. Will the wisdom kick in and give them another idea? And will they think it's crazy? Mm -hmm. You know, I was talking to a friend of mine that's quite intuitive um, yesterday. And we were talking about inner wisdom, you know, and knowing and and that type of thing. And and he said, um, how many people are going to actually listen? Because this person, you know, is kind of a practitioner. He's, you know, he sees a lot of people and within what he does. And and he said, well, how many people are going to listen to it? So, like, if you wake up one day and and with the thought, if you eat more of this herb or that herb or you take that herb and you mash it up and you put it on here or this wound or that, you know, and, and it will go away. It's been bothering you now for months. It'll go away if you do it like this. How many people are going to think, oh, my gosh, I'm not putting uh, rosemary on my, you know, leg or whatever. I mean, how many people are going to do that? How many people are going to look for something alternative, even when their intuition tells them, you know, and I'm not talking about medical stuff. I'm talking about in every respect. You know, I understand, you know, like Source said, start a news channel. I'm like, how the heck am I going to start a news channel? I mean, those people have millions of dollars. I mean, you know, I, I barely have two, you know, at the time. I'm like, how am I going to do this? And I guess it happened. Mm -hmm. You know, when it's right, it's right. When your intuition tells you to do something, that's the one thing I can assure you of. And it's happened over and over and over to me that there will be a way made. That means that pathway open for that business that you're thinking about because it came in through intuition or, you know, the path, once you start walking down that path, the pathway opens. Mm -hmm. Or you can sit there with your full cup and think of all the reasons why you cannot do whatever your intuition tells you to do. You know, the choice is yours. A lot of people, like you said, you know, there's a majority of people, if it's something positive, they're seeing people have positive effects and positive lifestyles and positive changes, what they deem positive, spending mm -hmm. more time with family, those types of things. Uh, I do believe the majority of people will see that as a positive and head in that direction, even if the media stays the same. Let's just say it stays the same and and the global headquarters decides to continue with their doom and gloom and we're all going to die plan mm -hmm. and pushing all the things that are unhealthy for us, foods and pharmaceuticals and things in the air and all of these types of things. But I don't see it having much of effect if we, if we all come together and produce our own lifestyle products. You know, what I mean by lifestyle, you know, how are we going to get around? How are we going to, you know, what are we going to put in our hair? What are we going to put in on our skin to cleanse it? What are we going to do? You know, how are we going to live every single aspect of my of your life without using any products produced by them? Mm -hmm. You know, as long as we have a replacement for them all, we can do it. You know, wisdom will tell all of you what you need to do. Yeah. You know, maybe we're making biodegradable, better toothbrushes. I, I don't know. You know, I don't know where which aspect of things uh, is your passion. Mm -hmm. But I, I can tell you it's going to have to happen because I don't see any 
any sign whatsoever of any of these people coming to any common sense decision, which leads me to believe that they're going to turn a corner or do something different. Because right now it looks like they're trying to manipulate me, trying to get information from me, trying to steal from me, trying to steal money when I take transfers. You know, they're still trying. I'm not saying they're being, they're successful, but they're still trying. You know, trying to get me to fund this and fund that person, fund that government and fund those people and, you know, those types of things because I have and could do that. But I'd rather fund you. So I'm not really interested in in playing the game where it's like, oh, okay, you know, here we go again, just like the Trump administration. Uh, speaking of that, uh, there's also been a lot of chatter amongst the Trump lawyers that if he gets back it, whatever it is or who that is, gets back into office, that all the money will come just like it did last time. And I can assure you with 100% certainty that is a false thought process. I mean, as much as I would cringe to see him get in office or anyone that isn't physically breathing get into office. Again? Maybe, again, maybe that's what needs to happen. Do you know what I'm saying? Like if these people think that Trump is the savior because one time he brought in some money that came from you, right? But yep. obviously Trump wasn't gonna give anyone credit for that and he didn't use the funds for what he was supposed to use it for. You know, maybe they need to see this for themselves. I think some of these people are gonna have to get a really hard lesson, you know, and then maybe they'll make changes from there. But I mean, and they're, they all are still limited with funding. So at, at some point, this the structure has to fall apart. I think that's also gonna be the catalyst that helps people wake up. Because if they wake up one day and they don't really have a government, <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? It's like some someone has to like, I was hoping maybe it would be COVID that woke more people up, you know, and I know a lot of people did wake up through that, myself included, but maybe something like that needs to just be the thing that shakes them. Like, would you stop because you don't have a government anymore? So now what are you going to do? That kind of mm -hmm. stuff could help for sure. You know, as far as the people that are the government, mm -hmm. and those are people you don't know, and those are people you don't see. The people that are the government have, and I'm sorry to say this, I'm going to say it, okay? There's no common sense, the ones that are trying to run it. Mm -hmm. And the people that are still listening to them with now that they are released also have no common sense because if you've been released, you have the right to say no. And there are a lot of people who have said no. You know, a lot of people that used to work in these sectors have said no. You know, I don't want to hear it anymore. You know, call me when you got something. You know, thank you. You know, and they keep trying to rally all the troops together around some fanatical idea that never ends up panning out. And you can only do that so many times to certain people, uh, and they're going to look at them and say no. Mm -hmm. As far as waking up these people through something, I'm not so sure. Really? Yeah. See, the percentage of people that woke up during the pandemic uh, was higher than the normal rate of people waking up. Now, was that due to the pandemic? Or was that due to the fact that their life slowed down uh, quite a bit and people were out of work? say and you know they're home now they're researching things on the internet they're looking for information you know they're trying to find out more they had more time on their hands because there was no work is mm -hmm. that possible it's possible yeah or does it just happen to be the fact that we were getting closer and closer to a light age things mm -hmm. were becoming clearer and clearer and humans were waking up But the one thing I can tell you with absolute certainty is it is not because of the Trump administration. <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't wake up to the fact that we went into, let's see, all of the positive things that happened, millions of American businesses shut down during mm -hmm. the Trump administration. Okay, millions. Millions of people lost their homes. 
Millions yeah. of people became homeless. This is just American citizens I'm just talking about right now. Uh, because we're talking about the alleged American president or the leader of the free world, right? Allegedly, the actor that plays the role. You, we, we went into lockdown. We walked around like idiots wearing masks on our face that made us sicker. Yeah. So if you weren't sick from what was going on in the world, then you got sick from that. You probably have, uh, there's a huge increase in uh, dental issues amongst people due to the mask wearing, because you're not supposed to re-inhale your own bacteria. You know, there there it was an uptick in pneumonia and other serious things that were not related to the pandemic uh, in any way. Uh, there was an uptick in, in a number of different things, uh, you know, illnesses and whatnot from bacterias and strep infections and staph infections on the face, uh, also yeast infections on your skin. People weren't cleaning the mess well enough, that kind of thing, and they just kept throwing them back on. Uh, so there was so many bad things that happened to the lives of American citizens. During that administration, I could go on for two hours right now, and nobody woke up. It didn't even wake up the Republican Party people, the voters. What is wrong with your head? What positive thing? Name one positive thing that this guy did. Can you name one, Sonny? What happened that was positive? Mm. We had mudslides in California due to fires. Remember that? Yeah. We I had... A hurricane where people are still homeless and living in trailers, and that's it's been years from Hurricane yeah. Michael. What did he do? Well, he did prevent Hillary from getting in. <laughs> so that's the only thing that I could think of. You know, I mean, whatever, they're on the same team, but still, I know. I think she would have been even worse. And obviously, there were other plans under Hillary. So that's the only thing I can think of. It, you know, it, they're both evil people. So, you know. I know. I, 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 yeah. What, what did you get? Well, I will say I have uh, reconsidered ever using self-tanner again. <laughs> I would love to know what the purpose was behind that because totally separate topic. But gosh, sometimes he just looks so orange and it had to be <laughs> – I mean, these people have people to help them look good. So I don't, I don't understand the comb over. I don't understand the orange face. It's just something like, it's like, he's like a character out of a comic book or something. I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me. Well, everybody's perception of what looks good is different. Yeah, well, I guess so. You know, and since, you know, your, your entire world exists in a group of fake friends and you've got mm -hmm. money. You know, they're not there because you look pretty and neither is your wife. Right. So <laughs> yeah, uh, she's no. there because she is actually an, an agent. Yeah. And he knows it, too. He was she was gifted to him. Yep. Just like the other ones. Yep. <clears throat> but anyway, long story short is, is that if that didn't wake them up government wise to and, and they're still thinking it was the greatest thing and they can't wait to get it back. Are you kidding me right now? That's yeah. like the, the spouse that goes back to the abusive spouse. Yeah. You know, I mean, you've been beaten, you've been lied to, you've been cheated on, you've been stolen from, you've been, all these things happen when you're with this person. Why, why do you want to go back? So, right. no, I don't have any hope of a government crash <laughs> getting these people awake. I don't. <laughs> I Maybe don't. Wishful thinking. I don't know. <laughs> I think something more more along the lines of, you know, of course, they're going to continue with their crazy depopulation agenda and corrupting food sources and other things. And we have alternative food sources over here, different places that you can get it. It doesn't have all the stuff in it. People are going to start migrating to different ways for those reasons. Yeah. I think they're going to see um, that's how they're going to slowly change their lives. I don't think it's going to be common sense. I think it's going to be out of necessity. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, like I said, if those corporations uh, start going under, well, where am I going to get my Doritos from? You know, well, you can't have Doritos anymore. Sorry. And no, but we can make some really you. cool, you know, all natural, you yeah, know. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. But out with the old in with the new, if, if the other stuff's going to fall apart, we can yeah. start replacing it. And we've talked about even having soda, not the bad stuff that's on the market now, but there is a good way to make soda, Could I, you know, actually make it beneficial for your body. Starting yep. to replace those kinds of things, I think, is a way to do it, too, where they're forced well, to make a decision because they don't have access to the other stuff anymore. Well, yeah, exactly. Or they keep increasing the price of everything. There you go. You know, That's that works cool. to our advantage, too, because we can make a liter of soda, which is not soda, but yeah. it has berries in it. It has antioxidants in it. It has all kinds of beneficial stuff right. in it that you would want to give to your kids. Right. You know, uh, there's all kinds of like monk fruit and things you can sweeten things with that taste just as sweet without the chemicals uh, yeah. that you can make soda from. Uh, and Maybe ours is cheaper. Maybe ours costs a dollar, you know, a liter, and theirs is going to go up to three, four, or five. I have no idea what soda costs these days. I don't. I don't look because mm -hmm. I never drink soda ever. So, but you know, uh, I would say to you that um, there are cheaper ways to do this, where you can even grow a lot of the stuff, for, you know, at your house and make it yourself, or if. If you have a larger area, you know, you can plant your plant your own ginger and monk fruit and all that kind of stuff. And then you can make yourself some ginger ale or ginger beer or whatever it is you're looking for. But I mean, we, we have to be better. Yeah. You know, these are all things to think about. How do you get the sleepy ones? You know, if 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 torture in every financial, physical you know, way did not wake up the American people, you're not going to wake them up if the government crashes. Yeah. They're going to be like, poor Trump. Yeah. Poor Trump. He got elected and then couldn't get in. There was no office to get into. <laughs> <laughs> that would be justice. Wouldn't that be amazing? <laughs> Yeah, but still, they, they they wouldn't. These people would be so upset. Their lives are now over. Well, then I also go back to well, then the you have to agree to this stuff. You have sole contracts before you come here. Do you know what I mean? So, I'm kind of like, well, that's maybe that's what they need in the long run. Yeah, want they probably on other planets and stuff. They put up these wanted posters, like <laughs> classified ads. You know, wanted. Someone to play the role of the sleepy people. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Must have zero life skills. Must. <laughs> yeah. No. You know, I mean, and we've talked about this in the new earth about how the children being born today and even in, you know, in the past, they're different. So maybe we just have to wait this thing out for some, for some of those people, you know, having, they're having babies, you know, their kids are going to be different. Maybe it just has to phase out on some level. That's not the way I would prefer to do it. <laughs> and we're on a separate path, but for those other people, I think we have to also trust that this is naturally going to happen um, because of the, the kids that are coming through now. But I, and I, and I think what we're going to see too is, is an in, an increase in an uptick in the percentage of your brain that people use. Yes. Yeah. So I had a conversation once with a, with a deep state guy who basically said that he felt that people that were used, utilized public assistance mm -hmm. in any way, uh, as worthless hmm. and, uh, useless eaters feeding on the rest of society, quote, unquote. And he said that most, and he gave me some statistics, which God knows where this person got them from, and I'm not saying they're correct, but he basically said that typically these people have an IQ of under 100. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they are doing this and they're doing that and, and you know, and, and all these types of things. And I said, well, that's your fault. And he said, how do you figure? And I said, well, let me see. You take a group of people, you decrease their brain capacity down to 10%. Mm -hmm. 
Then you feed those people even further, a lot of heavy metal, metals and chemicals and, and all kinds of stuff and spraying this and doing that. And I said, what do you expect? So now you took their already 10% of their capacity of their entire IQ, right? Their mental capacity, decreased it down to 10% of whatever it originally was. And then you fed them stuff further to even decrease it even more. I'm like, you're lucky you don't have to hand out you know, Velcro shoes to these people, you're killing them. True. Yeah. You know, they do the same thing to, let's just say a lot of people that are in service, mm -hmm. you know, that are in the militaries, they do, you know, they don't come back the same way they went in sometimes. And, you know, it's got to end. The program has to end. There's, there's a lot of work to do here, guys. I mean, I'm tired of watching these people. I really mm -hmm. am. I'd rather watch you. And I'd rather watch you on the news. I would rather watch you and your companies thrive. I would rather help and give you all the branding you need and packaging and what to say and, and how to make yourself successful and commercials and all kinds of different things where you can promote your products than talk for five minutes about these people. I'd rather do commercials for all your project, all your products, mm -hmm. if that's what you want to do, um, rather than promote anything. I mean, I'm just tired of seeing the same thing over and over again, you know, and I'm right. sure come the equinox, I'm going to see it again, and I'm going to see it again, you know, probably come the full moon and around the 25th, and I'm sure I'll see it again around Easter, and I'm sure I'll see it again around Orthodox <laughs> Easter, and, you know, <laughs> National Hot Dog Day, International Hot Chocolate Day, you know, I mean, whatever day ending in Y is in their books. Yeah. So, Looking forward to seeing uh, the wisdom of all of you, uh, the wisdom of all creation and co-creating with you. We, we've just got to make the changes ourselves. I mean, I, I agree with you. Um, there was a time where I thought that, you know, as we went down the food chain, I'm like, surely these people are happy to be free. It's Stockholm sy syndrome. <laughs> you open the gate and they're like, no, I'm just going to stay back here. It's all good. Yeah. I'm, I'm good. You know. Well, let me know when you got your safety net ready out there and your, you know, um, your air mask and your, you know, all the stuff I think I need to get out of this cage right here. I think I'm going to need some disinfectant. I need you to make it completely and totally safe for me to walk out. Yeah. Maybe some of them just don't want to change. Maybe they want, they, they hope things can go back the way that it was. Mm. And that's okay too. You know, I, I, I hope that they all leave this planet. I have hopes too. <laughs> no dreams. Yeah. Well, that's about what I have for Monday, other than a bunch of crazy stuff that they tried to do over the weekend. I don't that I don't even think's worth uh, worth the air coming out of my mouth. So I just rather <laughs> I'd rather talk about uh, positive things that are happening. Uh, How are we doing world. on the uh, the transfers? I, have you done more testing over the weekend? We did not over the weekend. Uh, we did last week, uh, yeah. many. Um, so we'll probably do that today uh, okay. since things seem to be quieted down in my world other than they're looking for money that they don't have. And I'm sure there'll be a meeting this afternoon around three o'clock Eastern time to talk about uh, why it didn't happen and when the next possible day for it to happen will happen. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Q clock keeps rolling over consistently with a new message of something evil nobody wants. And Oh, yeah. You were saying earlier before we started recording something about three days of darkness now. They cut it down from 10. <laughs> yeah, they cut it down to three. And at the time of this recording, I believe it starts in about an hour at 58 minutes or something from now. Ooh, uh, so and scary. then when there's no darkness, I'm sure <laughs> it'll be three days of, I don't know. Mm-hmm. 11 pipers piping, 10 lords leaping, nine ladies dancing, and then that'll go on for 10 days or two weeks or whatever, you know. Yeah. And then do you think, Kim, with the discussion we had last week about the apples, do you feel that that was kind of the last, 
you know, I get nervous about saying the last straw or whatever, but like, it's like, could there be anything that you've kind of seen on the horizon, anything else big like that? Like you said, they've been searching for a really long time um, for those apples. And now that that's done, is that kind of the nail in the coffin? Like, are we down to, um, you know, are, please, you can't give, you can't put common sense <laughs> into those people's heads. Like it's just yeah. never going to happen. Yeah. Is there another day? I don't, I'm sure there is. I am right. sure of it. Now, I think part of the reason why they thought this new moon was so special was because it was within 10 days of the equinox. Okay. Uh, the 10 days being more potent than the 30 days before and 30 days after, I guess. Uh, in their mind, maybe that's in the book too. I don't know where they get that from. Uh, I, I don't know if what's the last. I don't, I, I do not even think even if we were funding millions of dollars in projects a day, you know, through care or something that that would still stop them from reading those books and hoping for a day ending in why when everything comes back. Yeah, no, those those books are silly. But what I was referring to is more of like, I mean, Source really did bring back the apples. Like, that's a real yeah. thing. Yep. Is there any, you know, I would just love to know if that is, was that the last thing, the big thing that we were waiting for? Um, well, after that real. happened, then we have uh, holographic universes yeah. that operate um, in the same time frame in other timelines. So that that also started happening over the last 48 hours, too, mm -hmm. uh, as well. So yeah. what I'm seeing, you know... And, and here's the other bit of good news, too, is that we're now actually seeing real Earth, mm. uh, unadulterated, unaltered, uh, that type of thing. So these are positive things. Yeah. Uh, do they have any ability to reach into an alternative timeline and make a manipulation of, for example, holographic Earth and cause a problem here? Uh, no. Uh, but is it out there like uh, candy to a baby? You know, yeah. yeah. Uh, does it need to go away because we're never leaving this time? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so it is fading. Mm -hmm. uh, so those are positive things for us. Is that going to change their mind? No, I don't think so. Sorry, I just don't. You know, I, I don't think, uh, I don't know. They'll probably come up with something. I'm sure there's something in that book. Yeah. You know, some old information where they, they think, it's going to change something, but it's not. Nope. Nope. You know, there's a part of me also that would like to see them live with the rest of us because they don't consider themselves having to live like the rest of us. Mm -hmm. uh, and just grab a shovel and clean this place up like all the rest of us have to do. Mm -hmm. You know, clean up their own mess. I mean, that would be great. You know, maybe we put them in, you know, some kind of a prison camp somewhere and, and make them come out and clean the streets and, you know, repave roads with proper materials that don't kill people and cause cancer and, and all those types of things. You know, I don't even know if I'd trust them with that. <laughs> I know. Yeah. We'll teach and them all underwater basket weaving. <laughs> those families have enough money for them to live fine for a while, I'm sure. They just can't carry out the nasty stuff that they want to do to humanity on a larger level. So, Well, they don't use their own money for things like that right. either. They've never right. had to. So are, do they have what we would consider money? Uh, some. Mm -hmm. Because remember, they take money from every single one of those corporations and it goes up the food chain. So... Yeah. It's not like, yeah, you can deplete their bank accounts, but that doesn't mean that those corporations are not going to pay their tithe. Yeah. You know, their their protection money, their security money, their, you know. So, I, you know, are they ever going to run out? Are they ever going to stop paying? Well, when those corporations go down, then they'll stop paying. Mm -hmm. Will they run out of money eventually? Sure, of course. You know, can you take it out of their bank account every single day? Yeah, you can. Yeah. Just like they did to us all those years. But that's not going to stop the corporations from paying. Mm -hmm. So 
you have to look at the bigger picture and what what do you want to spend your time doing? Do we want to spend our time complaining? Uh, I don't. No. I mean, I'm just mitigating loss and mitigating, you know, hits and, and those types of things that could, could actually harm humanity while, you know, answering the phone and saying, okay, time for the timeline thing. Okay, well, all right, let's do it. You know, what are we going to do? And... <clears throat> But on the on the other side of it, I mean, I'm just excited to even have a little bit of time here and there to, you know, work on creating oil blends and other things that are going to help people go forward and providing alternatives to all the things we buy in the stores. You know, it, I'm, I'm looking at things like that. You know, I'm not really focusing as much on on them anymore. I just I just don't see any I just don't see it. Mm-hmm. I really don't, especially after the the meetings they had this weekend and the uh, shenanigans they were up to. Nah, yeah. no, they're, they're going off the cliff for sure. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's what we'll do. We'll put something that says like key to alpha here, like at the bottom of the Grand Canyon and make sure that the <laughs> only way they can get there is to jump. <laughs> Maybe that'll be it. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, and you know, people talk a lot about ascension online too, and going to 5D. You know, I've ex- I've just experienced this, you know, in my own life. You know, the people that no longer resonate with me on a frequency level just fall away. Yeah, I, you know, it, it, the relationship, it just, I go this way, they go that way. I wonder if it's just going to be more like that. The more we resonate on sources frequency, the more those people were just not even gonna. We're not even going to see them. You know, it's just like we can't necessarily, a lot of us can't see 5D, 6D, whatever beings. Maybe yeah. that's just what it's going to be. You know, they're here, but not here because we can't see them. They don't impact us and they're just doing whatever it is they do and wherever they end up. But we're moving forward, you know. Well, yeah, you know, and everybody else wants to, too. And it's yeah. still the case of whatever happens here, you know, happens elsewhere. So, I just, I feel better as a person creating, yes, you know, things and right. having the ability to at least having a little bit of balance that way where I can create and I, you know, have to take this out and that out and that kind of thing, you know, and yes, I have to still listen to their meetings and stuff, but just those, that, that small amount of time a day that I have to create new things yeah, uh, makes my whole day. Yeah. So. You know, there's there's some positives that have come out of just letting it go. Mm-hmm. You know, and if it's meant to be and if things are meant to change, then maybe source will change it. Yeah. But I can tell you that some of those people I have watched go literally crazy in the last few days with the wisdom. They don't want to look at it. Yeah. They don't want to stop. Their call. Yeah. I know anytime I've ever gone on against my intuition, it's never ended well, but you know, <laughs> that's their call. Yeah, I agree. So on that note, that's about all I have to say for Monday. Okay. Uh, very quiet and kind of just a little crazy and weekend. And that was about it. And moving on, probably going to be turbulent all the way f- with those people anyway, uh, until about the 20th, I'm guessing. And then they'll go another round once the, full moon happens for the next 10 days so is it going to affect us i sure hope not i i think the effects that they're having on us including myself are getting less and less and less and less as time goes on good so all right thank you kim appreciate you thanks sunny Want to share news from UNN? Help us change the face of social media and use it for good. Now we've got something new for you. We would love for you to create a short video, 30 to 45 seconds, telling us why you watch UNN. Our social media team will turn your videos into short promos that we'll be posting on our social media channels. And you can submit these videos the same way you submit field messenger reports through our website or via email at fieldmessenger at unitednetwork.earth. And you'll also find our UNN meme of the day on our social media. That's a great way to encourage critical thinking. Links to all of our social media sites are available at the bottom of our website at unitednetwork.earth. 
let's change the face of news together. And that wraps up today's news update. Please share UNN with your friends and family. We need everyone to come together and help restore our planet. When news happens in your area, record it and share it with us so we can help you share it with the world. Remember, if it's going to be, it's up to me. I'm Sunny Galt. Join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for the real news.